Hello, and welcome to Dining with Death. This episode is on my playlist, Dining with the Damned, where we talk about criminals who have been sentenced to die. We talk about their life and their crimes, how they ended up on death row, and then I show you and taste their last meal before execution. Please hit the like button if you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me. You can also join my Patreon where we have a very big goal. I will talk about that at the end of the video. I'm your host, Stacey Lee. Let's begin. Philip Ray Workman was born on June 1, 1953 at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, which is a United States Army installation that sits between the Kentucky and Tennessee border. He was raised by his parents on different Army bases, moving around as their assignments dictated. We don't have a lot of information on his early life or his childhood. I looked on all of the sites that I trust and have found to have the most accurate information, and none of them had really anything about Philip Workman's early life. We do know that after high school, he joined the Army, served, and was then honorably discharged in 1973. At some point in time, either before his life in the Army or perhaps during it, Philip was convicted of aggravated assault, but it appears he got only probation for that crime. Then, after he was discharged in 1973, he was sentenced to five years in prison in the state of Georgia for burglary and drug possession. He served only 25 months for that crime and he was then released. We see so many cases where people start out committing things like burglary and simple assault and they do very little time in prison and then they go on to do things that are much worse later on. So that always begs the question, should we give them less time and work with them more uh, when they first commit a crime or should we just lock them up for many, many years? I don't have the answers and I don't think anyone does, but it is part of the conversation and what we like to talk about here on Dining with Death. When Philip was 28 years old, in 1981, he was living in Columbus, Georgia with his wife and their eight-year-old daughter. Philip had a very, very serious drug problem and used cocaine on a daily basis. That, of course, caused financial problems on top of the other problems drug addiction brings. In the summer of 1981, Philip was desperate for money. He hitchhiked to Memphis, intending on performing some robberies in order to get cash, and so he took a gun with him. On August 5th, 1981, Philip Workman walked into a Wendy's fast food restaurant located at 3275 North Thomas Street. It's this Wendy's right here, which has since closed, but it doesn't look like that happened too long ago. Philip brandished his weapon and then began hurting all of the employees into the back and tying them up. After he had them all tied up, one of the employees asked Philip if she could stand, telling him she had a terrible cramp in her leg from the position she'd been tied in. So Philip allowed her to stand up, and when she did, she hit the silent alarm. That alarm went directly to police headquarters. The first officer to arrive was this man, Lieutenant Ronald Oliver. As Officer Oliver walked up the drive to the Wendy's, he saw a man leaving the building, and when the man, who was of course Philip, saw the officer, he began to run. Just then, a second officer pulled into the Wendy's parking lot and jumped out of his car. He and Officer Oliver began chasing Philip Workman and soon they caught up to him. The two officers tackled Philip in the back part of the Wendy's parking lot and took him to the ground. As the three men wrestled on the ground, Philip Workman fired his 45 caliber handgun, killing Officer Ronald Oliver and wounding the second policeman. That is the official story and the ones the courts accepted, but it gets very, very complicated. As the two officers lay on the ground, one of them dead, for doing nothing but responding to the call and fulfilling his job duties, and the other one wounded, a third officer pulled into the parking lot and gave chase as Philip Workman started to run from the scene. The officer, seeing Lieutenant Oliver dead, fired at Philip, and Philip fired back but thankfully did not hit the third officer. Philip then got away and disappeared into some bushes, but he was captured about an hour later by responding officers. We are often critical of police officers here in the True Crime Channel and here on Dining with Death. And I think when we are critical of them, it's deservedly so. Um, but for every officer that has made a mistake or does something wrong or does something criminal, there are 500, 5,000, 50,000 officers that are doing their job, doing a great job at that and really serving their community. 
By all accounts, Officer Oliver was one of those. He had been with the Memphis Police Department for 20 years. He was simply responding to a call, doing his job, and for that he was killed in cold blood in the parking lot of a fast food restaurant. Officer Oliver was a husband, he was a father. His kids would probably be about my age right now, and if they happen to see this, I am sure sorry about what happened to your dad. I can't even imagine what that has been like for you, and I feel terrible about what you've had to go through, all because this less than a great guy, less than a great guy uh, took these actions on this day. We often forget about the people in these stories that are affected, you know, like ripples when you throw a stone into a lake. It's not just the person that's killed. There are many other people that are affected as well. Philip Workman was put on trial in 1982, charged with the murder of Lieutenant Oliver and the shooting of the second officer, along with a myriad of other charges. The case appeared to be a slam dunk. The prosecution had an eyewitness, a man named Harold Davis, who saw the whole thing from just 10 feet away. He claims to have witnessed Philip Workman shoot Lieutenant Oliver, killing him. Well, later on, Harold Davis claimed he wanted to recant his testimony and did, in fact, retract it. He then claimed that he was threatened by police officers that harm would come his way if he officially changed his testimony. Other witnesses to the shooting stated they never saw Harold Davis and they were in the parking lot of the Wendy's as well. A man named Steve Craig couldn't appear in court to testify because of an illness, but he signed a statement saying he had a clear view of the entire incident and never saw Harold Davis anywhere. Why would Harold Davis lie? Because there was reward money for anyone that came forward and Harold Davis had a serious drug problem. Just like Philip Workman, he needed cash and decided to become a witness in order to collect the reward. The defense attorneys in Philip's case were a crime in and of themselves. The defense attorneys accepted the police and witness testimony and presented no mitigating evidence. They claimed that Workman was abused as a child. We don't have a lot of information on that. And they, of course, said he was heavily addicted to drugs as an adult. Well, Philip Workman was obviously convicted and sentenced to death, and there was a long set of appeals that went all the way to the U.S. Court of Appeals based on what Harold Davis said initially and then tried to recant. In the end, the U.S. Court of Appeals stated that the evidence did not show Davis lied at the trial and what he said later on did not, in fact, amount to a recantation. I know, I know what you're thinking, but hang on a minute. <laughs> We're getting there. So the defense had more extensive ballistics testing done. Many years after the initial trial, the new defense for Philip Workman brought in Dr. Cyril Wecht. We all know this face, right? He's very famous in the true crime community. And they had Dr. Wecht review the ballistics. His findings were very troubling. His report and his testimony states, quote, it is my professional opinion based on a degree of medical certainty that the gunshot wound to Lieutenant Ronald Oliver is not consistent with the type of ammunition used by Mr. Philip R. Workman. I do not believe that it was Mr. Workman's gun that fired the shot that fatally wounded Lieutenant Oliver. Dr. Wecht obviously never saw Lieutenant Oliver's body and that became a great source of debate as well. The medical examiner, Dr. James Bell, created a report at the time of the death and he did see the body. His report stated that the exit wound was consistent with a 38 caliber weapon, not a 45. Who uses 38 caliber weapons? The police do. It is the opinion of many people who have studied this case that Lieutenant Oliver was shot by either his own weapon or the weapon of the second officer involved in the tackle. This gets even more complicated, but in the end, it doesn't matter a whole lot to me. It matters legally, but I'll tell you why. On March 30th, 2001, only 37 minutes before Philip Workman was scheduled to be executed, the Tennessee Supreme Court issued a stay of execution stating, quote, if Workman did not fire that shot, he is not guilty of the crime for which he is scheduled to be put to death. No court in this state has actually held a hearing to fully evaluate the strength of these claims. The courts also had to consider the fact that many of the jurors who initially sentenced Philip Workman to death had written letters stating they would never have convicted Philip with the evidence not shown to them, and many of them became advocates for his release. 
Philip Workman's attorneys did such a terrible job at the first trial, the jurors were not given much of a defense. And so, of course, they just believed what the prosecution led them to believe, and they convicted this man. They later said they wouldn't have done that. On January 7, 2002, an appellate judge ruled against Philip Workman, stating, quote, the new evidence presented by lawyers for death row inmate Philip Workman is insufficient to warrant a new trial. The judge ruled that Harold Davis's statements did not amount to a recantation, and there were neither clear nor persuasive arguments for a new trial. I don't know about that. Um, now, of course, I haven't seen what the judge has seen and uh, don't know as much as he does about the case. This is starting to feel a little bit Southern good old boy 1980s style cop <laughs> and court justice, isn't it? I mean, a little bit. As the scheduled date for Philip Workman's execution drew near, protesters began appearing outside of the prison. Their presence drew news media who covered the pending execution and the controversy surrounding it. While in prison, Philip Workman had become a Seventh-day Adventist and he was very religious. He claimed to have changed his ways and given his life to God. Now here's what I meant when I said not a lot of this matters to me. It matters legally a lot. But here's the thing. If you have hemophilia, which is a disease where your blood does not clot, and you get cut, you can bleed to death very quickly. So if you're on a hike and you get bitten by a bear, just a bite, or say a dog bites you one day going to your mailbox, the hemophilia did not kill you. The dog bite killed you. Were it not for the dog bite or the bear bite, the hemophilia would not have killed you. Were it not for Philip Workman robbing the Wendy's that day, Lieutenant Oliver would be alive. So I'm okay with Philip Workman spending the rest of his life in jail, regardless of whether or not his gun shot and killed the officer or one of the officer's guns killed him accidentally. Because had he not gone in and robbed that Wendy's, that officer would have been alive at the end of the day, period. Now, is it troubling to have gotten this wrong in the courts and put someone to death for an act they did not commit? Yes, that is troubling. Legally, it's a huge problem because when you put someone on trial, the details of the crime they committed have to be very, very crystal clear. And the punishment that goes along with the jury's verdict has to be based on the facts of the case. If the facts are that Philip Workman's gun did not shoot Lieutenant Oliver, we have a real problem here. I don't have a problem with Philip Workman spending the rest of his life in jail. He chose to rob that store and a cop died because of his actions. But legally, it does feel like there was a little bit of railroading going on here and a little bit of good old Southern boy justice happening. On May 9th, 2007, Philip Workman was led from his cell to the death watch cell. Neither of Philip Workman's children visited him in prison that day or attended his execution. He'd spent two decades on death row and only his brother Terry was there to spend his last day with him. Philip's spiritual advisor stated, Philip did not shoot and kill anybody. The ballistic evidence says that. I'm very sorry to the spiritual advisor. Yes, Philip Workman did kill someone. He is guilty of killing that officer in the same way the getaway driver at a bank robbery when someone dies is as guilty as the person who pulled the trigger. Those are our laws. So yes, Philip Workman did kill someone. Whether or not he's eligible for the death penalty for that, that's what's at issue. Philip Workman met with his spiritual advisor, as you can see here in these photos, and then he made his last meal request, which of course I am going to show you. He was then led to the death chamber and strapped to the gurney. The curtains were opened for the witnesses and Philip was asked if he'd like to say any last words. He said, I commend my spirit into your hands, my Lord Jesus Christ. Then Philip Workman tilted his head as the combination of lethal drugs were administered. He took a last breath and after that there was no movement. Philip Workman was pronounced dead at 1.38 a.m. on May 9th. A very controversial execution and one we might never know the real truth on. But what did Philip Workman request for his last meal? I'm going to show you. For his last meal, Philip Workman requested nothing. Philip Workman wanted for his last request vegetarian pizzas delivered to all of the homeless shelters in Memphis, Tennessee. The prison refused to grant his request, stating that they do not get involved in donations to charity. 
This did not sit well with residents of Memphis, Tennessee. And the day of and the day after Philip Workman's execution, homeless shelters all around Memphis, Tennessee were flooded with pizzas, some say thousands of pizzas. People were ordering, paying for, and having delivered to the shelters pizzas in honor of Philip Workman's last request. Now, I could have very easily gotten a vegetarian pizza here and tried it, but that's not what happened. I try to keep these episodes as close to what actually happened, the food as close to what the inmate actually got as I can. So we're gonna do something a little different today. If you look in the description of this video, you will see a button that says fundraiser. If you are financially able to do so, I am going to ask that you donate a dollar to five dollars to the channel and I will take every nickel that is sent and take it to the Utah Food Bank. I'm gonna throw in $100 of my own and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Utah Food Bank. The Utah Food Bank is responsible for feeding thousands and thousands of hungry people. Something happened here in our state that I find incredibly disgusting and I put the blame solely on our lawmakers for this. But on March 1st, 2023, all SNAP recipients suffered deep cuts to the benefits that they get each month, right in the middle of some of the worst inflation in food costs we've ever seen. 77,000 Utah households lost their benefits, where they used to get $6 per day per person, which was almost nothing. They are now receiving only $23 a month. I have never talked about this on this channel before, but in my personal life, I am very involved in work with the hungry and the unsheltered people of Las Vegas. I have friends that I have met during that work, and I will tell you, there are a lot of hungry kids in Utah right now. It's summertime, and they don't even get their school meal right now. And you can unclick, you can unfollow, you can leave me nasty comments, but I'm gonna tell you something. In a country where we spend 10 times the amount of money that the next 10 countries spend on war, we should not have hungry kids. You take what the next 10 countries behind us, England, Japan, France, add all of their war budgets up, and it equals our war budget. We spend 10 times the amount on war that the next 10 countries do, combined. We shouldn't have hungry kids. This is something that I get very, very angry about. It is something that I am involved in because I am so angry about it. And at the risk of making people mad because they think I'm politically this or politically that, I just really don't care anymore. I've been here on YouTube for three years. This channel costs me tens of thousands of dollars a year. I don't make any money. And if I'm not gonna use my platform for this, what the hell am I doing here? So sorry for the bitchy attitude and the anger in my voice, this makes me angry. But again, if you are financially able to do so, if you wanna leave a dollar or two, every single penny will go to the Utah Food Bank. I've been involved in fundraising for many, many years, and when I do fundraising, I provide all of the receipts. I happily provide transparent accounting for everyone that donates. I would love to have a 501c3, which is a charitable organization. They're very difficult to get and it takes a lot of time. I've even had a name picked out for years, Loud Love. And who knows, maybe that's something I can do through the channel. But right now, I just wanna raise some money and get it to the Utah Food Bank because there are people in this state that are hurting. There are people in every state that are hurting and the fact that the people in charge don't care about hungry kids makes me furious. Click that button and get your donations coming in. I'd like to do this really, really quickly. I'm only gonna leave the fundraiser open for maybe about two weeks. It would be really great to get our donation to the Utah Food Bank before school starts so they can get stocked up because they're gonna be depleted after the summer break. Oh, I get fired up, I get fired up, I get emotional, I get angry, I just, this is something that just infuriates me. I've never known what it's like to be hungry. I can't imagine, and I can't imagine what it would be like to watch your kids go hungry. So if you can help me with this cause, it would mean the world to me. I'm gonna take just a second and calm down. Thank you for joining me today on Dining with Death, Dining with the Damned. Hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more from me. Hang on. Ah, uh, I'm sorry you guys. And if you really wanna support the channel, join my Patreon. The end goal on Patreon is this, 
There are police departments that have cold case DNA in storage that cannot be tested because there is no money to test it. We want to help with that. We want to get those DNA kits tested. So obviously the case that DNA is associated with gets solved. But the second thing that happens is the perpetrator's DNA gets put into CODIS. That increases the chances of finding that perpetrator if their DNA hits on another case. When you donate on Patreon, you help support the channel and keep it alive. And as the channel grows, we will do fundraisers where we specifically ask, hey, everybody do a dollar and hopefully we can come up with 1500 bucks to get one of those kits tested. I've got big plans. I've got big dreams for the channel. It's taking a while to get there, but I am a stubborn old bitch and I am not giving up. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me here today. Your support and your kind words, especially over the last few weeks, my birthday week, I had some stuff happen with my family. It's been a little bit of a rough summer for us and you guys have been nothing but supportive and kind. Your your kind words, I just, I don't think you'll ever know. I, I, I don't think I'd still be doing this if I didn't get the feedback that I get. I know I wouldn't be. I Why would I say I think? I know I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't get the feedback that I get from you guys. So. I appreciate you more than you know. I want only the best for you and only the best for our community. I want to watch it grow and I want you to be a part of it as it does. Stay safe, my friends, and be kind to each other. And I'll see you next time on Dining with Death. Bye.